In the part one of basement, we have looked at the method of deep excavation. Now in basement part two, we will be looking at the basement construction. In general, we have six elements or six steps of basement construction. The first one is preparing the ground, but for open cut methods, we don't really have as many as well. We have slopes at the sides and we have slope protection. Uh, then we have excavation. I have explained uh, four types of basement excavation. The first one is open cut and then cut and cover, top down, and composite method. Uh, then we have dewatering, basement wall, basement floor, waterproofing, retaining wall. Some of the retaining walls which are commonly used in Malaysia for deep basement construction are soldier pile, steel sheet pile, contiguous block pile, secret pile, and diaphragm wall. Soldier pile walls. Um, I have actually showed you the picture of soldier pile when I explained about the, oh, sorry, the, the cut and cover. Okay. Soldier pile is um, how do I explain? Soldier pile consists of vertical white flange seal members with horizontal timber lagging. So these are the vertical white flange steel members. I call it um, um, soldier. Some people might call it steel column or some people call it steel beam. Some people call it um, eye channel. H channel, it doesn't matter whatever you use, as long as you understand that this is the vertical steel members. And these are the lagging. Here it says timber lagging, but you can also have precast laggings or you can have steel laggings. Often used as temporary retaining structures for construction and excavation. So if you can see here, this is the steel vertical steel members this one yeah at the bottom here this is the plan and in between these two soldiers i normally sometimes i call it soldier or sometimes i call it uh, steel column in between these two columns you have leggings you insert in between these two okay soldier piles is useful when uh, we don't have enough space for slopes uh, you know when we use the open cut we can't use open cut if we don't have enough space or if the area is congested or if you have traffic where you're not able to use the road for a longer duration. Mm, the sort of pile uh, can be built up to five to six meters above the ground. Uh, and because the load can become too great because now you build it really high now because you can when you do this one when you build it high up to six meters the retaining wall will be tipped over and bend the steel this part can be tipped over bully um but i'm saying it and the retaining wall um the, the steel bends can be bent the binko meaning all the soldiers can can be bent which is why they normally add the ground anchor now if you can see on this illustration the horizontal one is what we call the ground anchor but sometimes you see chunks of them they are not really horizontal from one end to the other end you see like small uh ground anchor for example like this Okay, so this is this these are the soldiers, yeah, vertical. And these small ground anchors, and um, sometimes you call them wheels. Okay. Um these wheels extend or connect between two soldiers. I did one, two soldiers, and they connect two soldiers. So it holds up both bows to the back. Okay, they can tahan ke belakang by using the tie back. If you can see the tie back here, 
it's like diagonally pinned into the ground. There's a steel anchor that extends from here, from this point, back into the ground. It's something similar to uh, soil nailing, which you have learned or you will be learning in soil stabilization uh, topic. So uh, then they will begin, normally they will begin to excavate the soil vertically downwards. Okay, let's see the video now. I will show you the soldier piles. This is when they insert the lagging from the top and they are the video when they insert the lagging from the bottom. Okay, let me stop, if I can stop. Right, if you can see in the video, you can, you can actually see the soldiers here. They have already inserted the, the soldiers. At the point, the, the columns, the, the vertical columns still members. Okay. And they will start excavate uh, as usual. Right, so you can see the area is very congested. You can still see car parks along, you know, here at the sides, and you have buildings around. Now you can see, look at my mouse pointer, you can see some part of the vertical members and then they have inserted the leggings here from the top okay and they have ramp uh, for the excavator to go out and in at the corners here they have braces Okay, this machine here is actually doing the soil, I would call it like ground anchoring. Okay. So you already have two tiers of it. Keep excavating. Okay, that was the machine. This is the machine where they did the ground anchor and they have holes here so they can actually tie the wheels this is what we call the wheels okay these are the wheels and this pin here we call them as the ground anchor it will extend back into the ground pin it to the ground facing at this at the corner similar to soy nailing. So now it has gone deeper. So you can see they begin to excavate the soil vertically downwards. As they excavate, they install the pieces of timber leggings. Now he's cutting the timber legging. Okay, let me stop here. Uh, so you can see the soldier pile is up probably like uh, 
one, two, three tiers now, and they have staircase to go down. This is portable staircase for them to go down and up <clears throat> to do the work. I had a student who asked me a question like how the excavators excavators um, get out from that site like it's already deep and you don't really have the ramp actually they have they will have a crane here somewhere around and they will pull up all the machineries up there's nothing magic about that Okay, that's yeah. The ground anchoring. Now, some students may ask how they actually put the leggings in between the soldiers. I think in this video you can see. Can you see they are inserting the leggings here? Let me fast forward. This one, they actually insert the leggings from the bottom to the top. Ah, see? Cintu dimasukkan. Just fast forward more. This is just repetitive. Fast forward. They are still inserting the leggings. Okay, fast forward. Ah, ni sampai kat bawah. They close up from the top and from the bottom. And they have, if you can see, they have cut holes. They have holes here, they will have more holes for the ground anchor. Okay, fast forward. Fast forward. So now they have it completed ready to build the or install the ground anchor right. okay next steel sheet power wall i'm not going to explain to the on steel sheet power because you will be learning again or have learned in deep foundation topic this method is suitable for sites where space around the excavation is insufficient for swapping back the size. Basically, steel sheet power walls is similar to soldier power. It's just the inter installation is different. It's both of them are temporary, and it's up to five to six meters. It probably can go up a bit higher than that. But if you really want higher, like hundred meters, uh, you use the permanent one. It's usually necessary to provide lateral support at one or more levels, blah, 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 internal braces or tie back anchors. So when you have this shape pump, you need to have support. Either you use internal braces or tie back anchors. I have also showed you a picture of steel shape power walls, double, double, double wall. Tie back anchors are tension members drilled into the ground behind the wall, similar to the one I showed you just now in um soldier power the one that they use for soldier powers tie back or tie back anchors they are all the same but sometimes they will have different materials a bit for the anchor 
The most common type is grouted anchor with a steel tendon. Show you the illustration. This is the single wall, shipa. Single wall. You have one wall, two walls surrounding it, and you have struts. You may also have braces. This is internal braces, and this is the tie back anchor. You tie back the, the steel ship pile, tie back into the ground. This is the one I showed you earlier in basement part one. So you have double wall, double wall, up with two ship piles, and you have internal struts and braces. Double wall, but you have this is what we call the tie back anchor. You would tie between two um, ship power wall. Okay, so they have tie back anchors, or sometimes they, they call it tie rods. Now, the next one is contiguous board pile. Contiguous board pile is a line of board piles installed close close together or touching now i'm not similar to shit but i'm not going to explain in depth about a uh, bot pile because it's similar to bot pile under deep foundation topping smaller diameter micro piles may be installed in between adjacent pile to close the gaps between the main piles so what this is saying here is let's look at the picture this one these are bot piles, a line of bot piles. Okay, so you can see the gap in between the upper two bot piles. And the gaps you may use grouts or you may use micro piles to close the gap. Right. The typical sequence of construction is such that the next pile to be constructed more than three meters away from the previous one. So when they built the bot pile, the first bot pile and the next phase of the bot pile should be distant up to three meter away. Contiguous piling may be covered with mesh reinforcement or fabric based with rendering or spray concrete or shock fitting or uh, igniting. This is similar to soil nailing. Okay, what I meant by three meter, the first one, let's assume they have number number one two three and probably they start again one two three one two three one two three so when they construct the bot pile they will start constructing the first one number one first one and the next one is here one and the next one is here one and the distance between number one and the next number one should be three meters away so look at the diagram here Phase one, they call it, I call it number one. So they will construct the number one bot piles first. Once they are completed, they will build the second one next to the number one. So they will build number two and they will build all number two. And then they will build number three, the closing bot piles. And you will have a line of contiguous bot piles. Okay. The next one is second power walls. This one is a bit unique. Second power walls are similar to contiguous bot pile. They are constructed with two adjacent piles. They have the primary and secondary piles, which are locked into each other. I will explain a bit later. The primary are not reinforced. Okay, remember the primary are not reinforced. Yang, yang first dia buat tu, tak ada reinforcement bar. While the secondary piles are with, they come with a reinforcement cage. The primary piles are first constructed in alternate manner to leave a clear space for the construction of secondary piles later. The space being a little under the diameter of the secondary piles to ensure the interlocking. What this thing is saying here is um, you will have number one and number two, primary and secondary. I think uh, let, let me draw this a bit. Mm. Okay, let's assume the pink one here or the purple one here 
is the primary power. It has no reinforcement, normally lower grade of concrete. So when they build the primary power, they will be the first primary power first. Let's copy and they will build primary power. But in order to build the primary power, you have to leave the space between the first one and the second one. Um, the space should be a little under the diameter. Let's see if I do exactly like this. The space in between this one and that one, they are going to one diameter. So I do not want the gap to be one diameter. It should be less than one diameter. It should be less. There's a reason for that. I'll ex I'll show you later. Then you will build another one next to it. The same space. And you will build another primary one. Next. So you built all the primary piles without BRC. So then you will have the secondary pile. This is the secondary pile. I make lines. I make um, the circle with line because this one has um, BRC, ataupun reinforcement, and the strength is higher. It's just like a normal board pile. Okay, then let's read. What it says here, the primary piles are cast with specified strength of mass concrete, usually, usually lower strength concrete without reinforcement. This is the primary pile, the, the purple one. Okay, Before the concrete of the primary piles are fully set, before these primary piles are fully set, the soil between the two adjacent primary piles is drilled end or cut along a parallel but slightly offset line, line <clears throat> such that the holes cut into the sides of the two adjacent primary piles using appropriate coring tools. So what this point is saying here is you next then build the secondary pile, the normal bot pile. You drilled or core, this one should be under. Control copy, let's see. So you pecahkan tepi-tepi ni. You core, you bore both, and you will have this bot pile locked with the primary. The secondary pile now will be locked with the primary one. So you have this one built, and you will have another one built. So we will have like similar to contiguous bot pile, but this one you will have. Primary pile, which locked both of the, uh, you know, all of the piles, which lines up together. The enforcement cage is then lowered into the bolt holes when they, you know, they make the holes, they core or bore the holes. They then lower down um, the reinforcement cage. Again, this will, will be um, stitched. Or will be taught in deep foundation topic. Uh, lowered into the bolt holes and concreted normally with higher strength concrete to form the secondary pile. In this manner, each secondary pile is positioned in between and second with two adjacent primary piles to form an interlocking joint. I have, like I have explained here. Okay, so this is the illustration. This one is primary piles without reinforcement, and this one is the secondary. You can have the normal cage, or you can have the I or H channel. The next one is diaphragm wall. Diaphragm walls is the technique of building slurry walls. Why is it called slurry? Because they use the bentonite slurry. 
involve the casting of concrete walls from 450 mm to 1.5 meter in thickness. Tebal, eh? It's very, it can be really um, uh, thick and up to 122 meter in depth below grade around one or more sites of an excavation. I've just seen in a video, they have excavated up to 200. That was the, the latest um, machine they use and they excavated up to 200 meters uh, below the ground. So the first thing for diaphragm wall, diaphragm wall is a bit special. They have what we call guide walls. Guide walls is like something like longkang, like, like a perimeter drain, normally constructed to improve trench stability and to serve as guides for excavation. Let me show you the picture. This one, this is what I meant. The first one, they will build the guide wall along the, uh, you know, the, the perimeter of basement wall. Yeah, this is the guide wall. Uh, okay, now you will ask me what it look like. It's just like a normal drain. I have actually drawn um, my end node. Right, excuse for my uh, drawing. I just use my mouse. So this is typical section of um, what do you call it? The, the, the guide wall. Ni, the punya guide wall, and do you know. 300 is typical, you might have maybe 450, it depends. And the depth is about 1.2 meter, you can have 750, I've seen 750 as well. And how did, did this wall, Sembiasila, you have learned in building construction when you were in semester one, how did you uh, build the, guide, the, the, the ground beam? You first excavate the trench, isn't it? Uh, you excavate the trench and then you put form work the cut sides um, and rebar reinforcement bar for for the wall for the guide wall and you pour in the concrete um, i've seen pictures i've seen videos of guide wall not having they didn't actually put um put the form work Okay, so it doesn't matter as long as they have the guide wall. Okay, go back to the slide. After you have the guide walls, then you excavate the first panel. The, you excavate for the first panel. Okay, so every section of the Diaphragm wall we call panel, so they will excavate the first panel, usually not exceeding seven meter in length, and the full uh, and the full depth is required. The wall may be built in consecutive or alternating panels, and the proceeding will vary depending on which system is used. I will explain this point a bit later. Right. So the second step is to excavate the the first panel. Okay, you will have the first byte normally the get blood kitty. You will have the first byte on the left, and you will have the second byte on the right, and you will have the middle byte, um, or they call it middle dumpling. This is how they excavate. Ah, this is this is clear. So this is the first byte, and then they will have this is the first byte, sorry, completed, and then they will have the second byte and the middle dumpling. Right. They will put, after the excavation, they will put, this is what we call the stop. They will install the stop end. And, and at the stop end, normally they have like a rubber, what do you call that? A rubber tapping, a rubber tapping so that when you connect between the first, this completed wall and the, another wall, you have stop wall here. When you connect each of the panel, you will have a very good connection because you have the rubber, rubber stopper, you have the 
uh, and and this uh, apa tu um, stop ends ni it's like uh, batang besi it's it's very vertical it's like it can be concrete it can be steel um, it has shapes actually corrugated or you have um, apa tu shapes yang macam bergerigi so that each of the panels interlock nicely. Sorry, I miss a bit about. Uh, I miss a bit before they put the stop ends. They normally, when they excavate while excavating, they pumped in the bentonite slurry. This is where they mix the bentonite slurry. They have bentonite powder mixed with water, and then they pump it in when they are doing the excavation because the bentonite slurry will help in. Um, uh, how can I say the soil from collapsing back into the trench or into the hole? The once they put the stop ends, they will then lower down the steel cage. And at the steel cage, they will have ground anchors when they to strengthen the soil when they concrete it. Um, then they will use trimmy this this pipe you mentioned chorong this is what we call trimmy pipe and the pipe length is until the the bottom of the diaphragm wall so when they pour in concrete the concrete will go to the bottom first and the length of the trimmy pipe will be uh, shortened when the concrete is you know progressing up uh so now you had the bentonite slurry here when you did the excavation remember so when you pour in the concrete from the bottom uh, automatically the bentonite will be pushed up okay but because the con how, how can i explain because the, the concrete is um heavy and it will push up the bentonite slurry and can you see that the pipe here they will pump out the bentonite slurry back to the uh, plant and some part uh, sorry some the amount of the bentonite slurry will be reused again for the next benton uh diaphragm wall uh the first panel we we call the first panel as the primary panel and they might have another primary pan panel here and the way they built the diaphragm wall by either alternate manner, but any drum part, this one and then that one, this one, or they build the primary one first here, we pass to the next one will be the next, next to the primary, and then the next again, next, next, next. And the last one, they call it closed panel, and this one, what we call the running panel. I have explained this under the cons. Uh, Consecutive method, after the first panel is complete, others are constructed next to it, next on either sides and except for the first one, the first panel. The completed wall may serve as a dual purpose, but once you have the diaphragm wall, it has two functions, it has two purposes. The first one is as the retaining wall, and the second one is as the um, exterior wall of the basement this is illustration this is i've showed you the illustration this is the machine for diaphragm wall excavation um you can see this is the guide wall this is the guide wall and the machine it depends the thickness of the machine depends this thing we call grab okay so when the grab goes down we call the grab is biting the soil i have a video to show uh, let's see the building uh, damn, I'll fast forward this a bit. Okay, this 
is the diaphragm wall machine. So you can see this is the grab, and inside the grab you have the um, something that rotates to break the ground. These both sides are the guide wall. Maybe the nampa guys ni. You can see this this thing, the one that rotates in the ground. This thing will break the ground. The cutter, yeah. Direction. Then the cutter is steered vertically by using hydraulically adjustable plates, which are controlled by the rig operator. By the place, Both cutter wheels rotate against each other, and therefore the soil is broken up, transported, and sucked to the top. Simultaneously to that, the supporting salary is added by pumps into the trench. The cutter at least reaches the final depth of 70 meters, or the required inlet mat of 40 centimeters in solid drive. So it says, uh, he's saying that the slurry is very important because you don't really have other supports. Because when you do bought piles, you do have casing to avoid the soil from, from uh, collapsing back in the hole. But for diaphragm walls, you need the slurry mud or we call it bentonite slurry. So this project is a bit comp um it's a bit um, unique, I, I shall say, because they mix the concrete in situ and they have pipes. They don't really have the batching plant uh, to deliver. Uh, I call it Lodi Siput. So they don't have the um, and then they uh, pour the concrete onto the trimmy pipe to uh jadikan diaphragm wall but in this case they have um, concrete batching plant So the cut them too, it's just like KLCC. When we did KLCC, we had everything in situ. We had the um, factory set up on the KLCC side itself to cut because it was congested and the traffic and everything. So everything they run work as it do, ikat riba, you know, mixing of concrete. It's the same as this dam, but they are mixing uh, batching plant is a bit further. Right, so they have pipes. So they have pipes. Okay, so that's about it really. I'm not going uh, them. 
Right, so I'll record the next. Um, we will have, we still have the two um, dewatering uh, and waterproofing for basement. So um, I'll record basement part three uh, next week. Thank you.